We're back. We're back! <laughs> What's up, Chris? Hey, Jeff. How are you? Got, I got my teammate and my buddy Chris Reichert with me, and um, we're back. This is Alviso, a familiar course, but it's been a while. Man, I was so excited to go out. And Chris, your first time at Alviso. S second time, but first time racing you. What do you think about the course, by the way? Well, uh, you know, it's funny. Like, I've seen so many of these videos of, of you racing out here, and I've, I've got to, like, know the course from, like, being in the videos. But for as flat as it is, it's a tough course. There's, Windy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's got kind of a lot of difference to it where you get a lot of headwind in some parts and you get a lot of tailwind in other parts. So you can get some parts of the course that are just absolutely ripping fast. But then if you're by yourself in other parts of the course, you just feel like a turtle, just like dawdling <laughs> along. Like, it just doesn't work, right? So, yeah. Uh, it's a great course. Like I, I, I would love to see a full field on this thing just screaming. It would be like such a perfect race course. I've thought about that. It would be pretty cool to do like a like a yearly like world championship LV so where we do race for like three hours on it. <laughs> where we race maybe like an hour where we uh, get like full closure and it's sanctioned. I think it'd be cool to do like an actual event on that course. Anyway, uh, would anyone want that? You can comment below. I would. I want that. <laughs> maybe I'll become a race promoter make that happen but uh yeah we're out there uh out there for the first time in a while you see it's a full field um we had our our other teammate sam came out big sprinter sam all the hitters i'm not going to name all the names because there's just too many to list another windy day at alviso let's get into the footage and talk about it and we're racing it does feel good to be back uh you know one thing that i think is tough now is like we've all been training in the off season and everybody doesn't really realize how strong they are or how fast they can go and for me like this is one of my first times on this course so i don't actually understand how fast you have to go through these corners and you know whenever you get out on a new crit course this is one of those things where you have to try to figure that stuff out so we're midway through the race sound about right yeah i think so and uh i'm about ready to light jeff up right here uh <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how this course works, and I'm trying to figure out when and how to attack. And right here, I light it up, uh, what, 200 meters from, uh, 100 meters from the corner? 50 meters from the corner? 15 <laughs> meters from the corner. And I go into it too hot to actually hold the line. And I think that's one thing that you always like have to think about. Like when you're racing, like how do you figure out when and where to attack? Like Jeff, you've done this course a ton of times. Like where are your favorite places to attack? Um, I like that little that little um, zigzag bit uh, in the infield, I guess is what we're calling it. The infield. The infield. Um, the only left-hander on the course, it's usually a crosswind, and then you come into a headwind. So if you can get a gap on the right, the, the right into a cross and then the left into a head, people will give up if it's like coming into a headwind. Nobody wants to pull on a headwind. Nobody, nobody wants to pull. I, I think let's all just take one moment of silence here because, uh, uh, Jeff, are you about to take a pull? Oh yeah! By the way, um, <laughs> a Aiden's, Aiden McNeil is uh, is here too. I forgot to mention, like legit U twenty three pro rider. But yes, I am pulling hard here because <laughs> we, although we are teammates today, we are not teammates. We should make that very clear. Exactly. So uh, you know that's that's like a really like fun part of this race. You know, for us to be able to get to race each other. Uh, but yeah, I think this is this is like such an interesting part of racing. It's it's you've got to figure out where to attack. Uh, for me, that corner that I, I sent through was uh, a place where I felt like I could carry a lot of speed into the tailwind. Uh, always attacking into a tailwind is always a, another good way to think about things. Uh, and it makes these guys have to work a whole lot harder from behind. Because you opened, because because of that tailwind, you opened a huge gap. And um, and somebody with your, with your fitness can, can hold that gap until the point where it's like you're in a cross and a headwind when people really lose their motivation to chase like you see i did a hard pull but now I'm, I'm dropping back probably further than i should be but um that's a dangerous game i'm playing because pretty soon we're going to hit the cross headwind section that i was talking about this is the first of, of two headwind sections that we're on right now and um and usually the motivation to chase falls apart in the headwind section meanwhile you're just up there doing what over over 400 440 450 because some power your freak of nature well but like that's the thing you know like i i got to capitalize on a moment where you guys you know i i i gotta give credit to aiden like uh you know judging from your camera he got on the front right away and like went to mediate that right away and you were right on his wheel and you came through and you understood that like hey a strong rider's gone up the road and is going to keep riding really hard and you guys all work together so well but capitalizing on those moments where uh, somebody is uh, maybe not paying attention, that's really what you're trying to look for. Yeah. 
Yeah, good thing we were pretty organized, and um, I was extra motivated to chase you back. So was Sam, so was Aiden, and so were a handful of other guys. So, spoiler, you were eventually brought back. Let's fast forward a bit and talk about it. All right, so Chris was brought back from his solo bid, but you were gone for like two or three laps. You end up off the front again with Aiden, and then here I go. I waited for the tailwind for this one, and the alarm bells are going off in my head because it's you and Aiden off the front, Plus, um, there's a Thirsty Bear guy, and plus, I think, one or two other riders. And it's like, oh, I better close this down. Tailwind's the best place to... If I'm going to do an effort, I want to do it in the tailwind and hurt everyone else behind me. Now, Jeff, uh, did you just, like, wait for everybody to get on your wheel before you tried to close that gap? I thought I did a harder effort. Like, honestly, (laughs) this was funny. Because I was telling Chris, I was like, dude, I did the hardest effort to chase you back. And then I looked back at the footage and I was like, where was it? It turns out I'd seen it. It just wasn't very impressive (laughs) because I'd done a hard pull like a half a lot before that. That basically, this is a good point right here. Let me, uh, let me talk about getting back to racing. Learning moment. Okay. Three months of not racing. Like you kind of forget, right? Tell me, Chris, do you ever have these moments? I usually have them. COVID's a weird time. So I'm having them in June, but I usually have them in like January. When people start getting back to hard group rides, practice races, maybe the first race of the year, where like I tell myself, I convince myself, I'm like, oh, I'm a breakaway rider. And then I <laughs> learn very quickly that I am not cut out for that. When the stars align, I can ride a breakaway. But like I try to do like solo efforts at Alviso and I do stuff that like just doesn't necessarily work. Do you ever make that mistake? I don't know. You're a pretty seasoned athlete. All the time. Like I think but that's the thing, you know, like whether it's Alviso or, you know, just like supporting your local events, uh, you know, wherever you are, like the number of race days that you're pinning a number on or not pinning a number on, but still racing, like it gets those jitters out of the way. Like that's been one of the big things I've been worried about in COVID. Like we're all going to go back to racing and potentially the first real sanctioned race might be nationals. And we're all going to come in super strong and no one's going to remember how to race a bike. I was like legitimately worried when I came out to today's Alviso. I was like, do I remember how to ride in a group? Do I remember how to time a sprint? Do I remember how to like time an attack or like gate or just like measure that effort? Because you don't want to do 1200 watts for 10 seconds and then just be completely gassed in no man's land. That's not the worst thing you can do. So there were a couple of times and one of them was that kind of lousy attack about a half a lap ago I did to chase you back where I was like, I felt that like twinge in my, in my uh, hamstrings. I was like, Ooh, I've gone a little bit too hard, a little bit too soon. All right, so we've hopped ahead uh, just very briefly to one lap to go uh, under 3K. And what we were talking about just a second ago was, you know, how do you take your setup and how do you get into the position you want for when you're going to come into a sprint? Yeah, so this is this is a big skill. And this is also something that might get a little bit rusty after solo training during uh, shelter in place times. But um. But basically, I mean, the the short version of it is you just want to get out of the wind and stay sheltered in the draft as much as possible. So I'm trying to remain a ghost. You can see it slowing down here because kind of those last couple of stragglers off the front were finally reeled back in. Thank you, Chris. Got it. Appreciate that. And um, I just want to remain like like hidden back in the pack and forgotten about until I can move right up into position with maybe 1K to go. You start thinking about you really want to lock yourself into position because if the speed's high... Um, I got a comment the other day, um, a YouTube comment the other day. Somebody was like, why don't you just sit at the back until like, like one kilometer to go or 500 meters to go and then just move right up to the front win. Well, everyone wants to do that. (laughs) Man, when you're at a big race though, like, and you're with like fast riders, you know, moving up, especially in the last three laps is darn near impossible. It's so hard. And, and all is the same way. If it's, if it's ripping on the front and you're, you're going to see in a minute here, Chris is is going to start ripping it on the front. Aiden's ripping it on the front right now. It's hard to move up. So if you're like towards the back, 20th wheel, 30th wheel. Um, that's your spot you're sprinting from. That's going to be the spot you're, sprint, you're sprinting from. And you can see that I'm kind of rolling the dice here because although it's a bad place to be um, when it comes down to the, the, the final, it's a really good place to be if you want to get a good draft and save your legs. And that's what I'm doing here. And this is just a roll of the dice. Um, I'm further back than I want to be. Um, we're hitting a headwind section here, and I'm going to find a good chance to move up. No, but I, I have to say, like, you know, like, uh, Steven was coasting right there. Like, that would be a good pay- place to, like, pick up a couple of places, yeah. right? Don't you think? I d- but I don't want to do it in the headwind. It would have been a good place to, to move up a, a couple of, uh, of, of spaces, but it would have cost me a big surge in, in power. And 
just like being too far back, you also don't want to be like second wheel no, coming that's, into one kilometer That's to almost go. like, you know when you've done that math in your head and you know that you're coming into the line and you're too far forward, you're like, what do I do? Oh, yeah, because like, you, you know people you, are going to peel yeah, off. They're yeah. going to peel <laughs> off and you're going to get stuck out there and you're yeah. like, looks like I'm the lead out, <laughs> which isn't exactly what I'm doing right here. But, uh, but yeah, I, I at this point... Uh, you know, I had my fun early in the race and, and I've now decided like, let's keep this pace high and let's keep a sprint together. So when you're coming into these final last corners, like why don't you just walk us through what you're, what you're doing? So right now I need to move up and I'm following a pretty good wheel here. Cause I know that Stefan, Stephen or Stefan, I'm not sure. Stefan. Stefan. I know that Stefan is going to, um, he's a good draft. First of all, he's got a lot of power and I know that he's going to be in, um, in the right position cause he's, he's going to want to duke it out in the sprint, but I'm still, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth wheel. With 400 meters to go, I need to move up. And now we're in a tailwind. We're going to cross a little bit here, but the road's going to move to the left. We're going to hit a tailwind, and um, and that's when I can really make up some serious ground because um, it's a tailwind, and you're not <laughs> battling as much of a headwind. So I see this little gap open up, and I have, to, I have to just turn it on immediately. So I step on it as hard as I can, and um, I just come across this front group of riders. Uh, that tailwind were sprint. Slowing windy down. Wind sprint. Early early you got to get on it early in a tailwind because we got up to 42.7 believe it or not it's a fast sprint and um if you go early and uh people don't have a time to to get up to speed look if, if you're going 36 already to get up to 40 it's really difficult so i got the jump on those front riders and even though i know sam's got monster sprint numbers he just ran out of road he just didn't have enough time to to catch back up to my wheel so um that was all she wrote bingo bango can that be my slogan it is now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, be sure to click subscribe to watch me beat Chris yet again next week. <laughs> and uh, we'll catch you at the next one.